there history buffs and welcome back to the channel. On this day, the 12th of July 1543, King Henry VIII wed his sixth and final wife, Catherine Parr, in the Queen's closet of the Chapel Royal at Hampton Court Palace. Let's take a look at their wedding. The wedding of Catherine Parr and Henry VIII must have been a small, intimate affair as the Queen's Privy Closet, or Lady Chapel, a room that I have been in several times, is quite literally a closet. It's about 10 by 14 metres. If you go to Hampton Court, the Queen's Closet is the small room with the two pews and cushions. The ceremony was presided over by Thomas Cranmer, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Unfortunately, there is no record what time the ceremony took place or what Catherine was even wearing, unlike some of his previous marriages. But Richard Watkins, the king's word I can't pronounce, also means principal clerk of a court, did make an official record of the marriage and included the names of those present, which included the king's daughters and his niece, Margaret Douglas. The King and Lady Catherine Latimer, alias Parr, being met there for the purpose of solemnising matrimony between them. Stephen, Bishop of Winchester, proclaimed in English that they were met to join in marriage, the said King and Lady Catherine, and if anyone knew any impediment, thereto he should declare it. Nobody opposed the marriage, but they all applauded. The Bishop of Winchester, put the questions to which the king, Hilari Voltu, with a smiling face, replied, yeah. And the Lady Catherine also replied that it was her wish. The king took her right hand and repeated after Stephen Gardner, the Bishop of Winchester, I, Henry, take thee, Catherine, to my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, till death us depart, and there too I plight thee my truth. The couple released hands, and the Lady Catherine held the King's hand, and said, I, Catherine, take thee, Henry, to my wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to be bonair and bosom, in bed and at board, till death us depart, and there too I plight unto thee my truth. According to Catherine Parr's biographer, Linda Porter, the vows for Henry and Catherine's wedding were identical to those at all of Henry's weddings, and virtually unchanged by the Reformation or centuries, they are the words still spoken at Anglican weddings, which is true they are very similar to the vows spoken at modern weddings. According to Watkins, the following people were present at the wedding. John Lord Russell, Keeper of the Privy Seal, Sir Anthony Brown, Captain of the King's Pensioners, Thomas Heenage, Edward Seymour, Earl of Hertford, Henry Nivett, Richard Long, Thomas Darcy, Edward Bainton, Thomas Speak, Anthony Denny, William Herbert, Catherine's brother-in-law, who had married her sister Anne Parr, the Lady Mary, the King's daughter, the Lady Elizabeth, the King's daughter, Margaret Douglas, the King's niece, Catherine Willoughby, Duchess of Suffolk, Catherine's friend and wife of Henry's bestie, Sir Charles Brandon, Anne Stanhope, Countess of Hertford, the wife of Edward Seymour, and Catherine's future sister-in-law, Jane Dudley, Viscountess Lyle, and Catherine's sister, Anne Herbert, Nee Parr. We don't know if any celebrations took place after the wedding, as there are no surviving records, but it could also be down to the fact it was a discreet, intimate affair, a far contrast to some of the grander weddings of Henry's past. 
Catherine was proclaimed Queen of England the same day as the wedding, but again fitting with the low-key theme, there was no talk of a coronation, and there was no great state entry into London. A few days after their wedding, the king and his new queen went on a summer progress, their first stop being Oatlands Palace in Surrey. Make sure you go check out my video if you want to learn more, as I actually went to the last remaining wall of that palace. It would be here at Oatlands that Catherine wrote to her brother William. This is a summary of the letter recorded in Letters and Papers. It having pleased God to incline the king to take her as his wife, which is the greatest joy and comfort that could happen to her. She informs her brother of it, as the person who has most cause to rejoice thereat and requires him to let her sometimes hear of his health and friendly, as if she had not been called to this honour. Given at my lord's manor of Oatlands on the 20th of July, well beloved brother, the Lord Parr, Lord Warden of the Marshes. Catherine was Henry's sixth wife, and he was her third husband. She had been widowed twice, her first husband, Edward Burr, whom she married in 1529, died in 1533. A year later, she wed John Neville, Lord Latimer, and had nine years' experience of being a stepmother to his children till his death in March 1543. Her first two marriages had prepared her for her role of queen, carer, and stepmother. Her marriage to Henry lasted until his death, a new concept to Henry, on the 28th of January 1547. Catherine would be Henry's second longest reigning queen after Catherine of Aragon and would become a stable mother figure to Henry's three children. Catherine would have a close relationship with her three stepchildren. She was the only one of Henry's consorts to be queen consort of England and Ireland. She was also the first English queen to publish a book under her own name and was only the second of only two of Henry's queens that were appointed as regent in his absence. Just a few months after Henry's death, Catherine went on to marry Thomas Seymour, Lord Sudley. Catherine died on the 5th of September 1548 at Sudley Castle, just a few days after giving birth to her first child, a daughter, Mary. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, have a wonderful day.